I need to tell you, Linux Mint and Pop! OS are based on Ubuntu. And for the most part, there's a lot of bloat in those as well. So I need to install those next really to uh, use them as my daily driver again, just to kind of get, get my take on it, my hot take like I did on Ubuntu. But what I ended up doing is documenting all this because if you have Ubuntu, chances are there's a ton of junk in it that is slowing your system down because I noticed my system going down in performance based on my Vanilla Debian install. I, I noticed it considerably lagging compared to my Vanilla Debian install. So uh, I don't like it. I still don't like it. I, I'm still in the process of debloating. But with all that said, I don't want to make this a rant video about me just going, hey, Ubuntu sucks, which it does. But I want to go ahead and give you, the person at the end of this screen, some opportunities to make your Ubuntu at least more bearable. Because I'm having a, a, not a fun time on Ubuntu with just this. I can only imagine what you're going through if you're on Ubuntu. So with that, uh, on the GitHub uh, that is owned by Microsoft, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really turning into one of those snarky YouTubers, aren't I? Oh, Lord, I might need to re-record this. Anywho, go on the GitHub's. I got my Chris Titus Tech there. I have Ubuntu 18 is what I'm using, probably the most compatible version of Ubuntu with all the versions out there. And I have a script. And this script uh, is really good as far as installing the basics from a minimal install and then performing some tweaks. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over on the desktop and discuss some of these tweaks. I'm on my studio PC right now. But at the same time, we can remote in and, and kind of take a look at some of this stuff on the Ubuntu base machine. Okay, so here we are on the Ubuntu desktop, finally. Uh, you guys probably didn't notice anything, but it took me about 30 minutes to realize uh, Ubuntu 18 has changed some of their remote settings for remoting into the desktop. I've always set it up using Vino, not the wine, but the actual remote desktop preferences that Ubuntu has. I actually uh, set a video up about a year ago, which now I need to go back and refer them to this video, because guess what? Remote desktop actually changed a little bit, or, or VNC changed a little bit using Vino. It's not installed by default in Ubuntu, and you can't just click, yes, please remotely control my computer. Uh, so if you guys are interested and want to remotely control your Ubuntu, we'll simply come into your browser. I created a little script for you guys, so you can easily uh, do this on your Ubuntu. One of two scripts I'm going to show you today. If you go GitHub forward slash Chris Titus Tech, it'll bring you to this screen. We simply come to repositories. I'm now up to about 14, but we need to go to Ubuntu Remote is what we're looking for. Um, and it's actually right here at the top. Now, a uh, couple things here. This is installs Vino, sets preferences, and makes it so you can do unencrypted VNC uh, remote connections, which is really nice, especially when you use a VNC viewer from Windows to your Linux box or vice versa. So it, this is actually a, a good thing. However, it is very insecure, meaning uh, if you expose port 5900 to the outside world, anybody can connect to your computer. And I mean anybody. So don't do that. And if you're doing this on a laptop, don't connect it to public Wi-Fi and then be shocked when some random stranger jumps on your computer. Again, not good. But for this, I don't mind open this up because I don't expose that port and I secure my network. So when I'm on the network, I know that I'm the only one on it. Uh, but, you know, use this at your own peril is basically what I'm saying. Uh, so get, you can just do a git clone Ubuntu remote and then run it. I'm going to just go through a little bit. Let me zoom in here on a little desktop. Uh, this right here is what's in the script. Uh, this VNC script, just a regular old bash script. Do VNC with no encryption. Uh, it does gconf2 and vino for the install. Opens up the firewall, 5900. Allows remote access. Disables the prompt, requires encryption to false, meaning no encryption, and then uh, launches the GNOME or GNOME control center. When you get into the control center, simply go to screen sharing, tick it on, uh, which I'll show that real fast. Come here, hit the settings box, 
settings pops up, sharing, and then click screen sharing, and then just make sure you type in a password in this screen. So if you click on this, uh, you type a password under requir required password, all these settings should be like this, and you literally can VNC into this computer using pretty much anything on your local network. Just remember, don't port forward to this because you're just going to allow every any stranger that wants to control your computer access. So I just want to reiterate that. So now that we're remoted into our Ubuntu computer, what all does my Ubuntu look like? People are noticing that I'm using the GNOME desktop environment. Not GNOME, but GNOME. I'm changing the name because that just sounds silly. And I know I'm hearing that in the comments, but I don't care. So right here, you got your basic stuff. I, I don't have anything crazy in here. Some people are going to notice um, like live patch. The icon's still there. I've actually disabled that and done a lot more tweaks. So let's go over some of those tweaks real fast. So here is the tweaks that uh, of debloating Linux or debloating Ubuntu really is what this should be called. Um, I remove all the snaps and then reinstall a lot of the GNOME snaps that were in there. Uh, this kind of gives me the ability to completely remove snap packs altogether as I don't like them. I don't like the fact that Ubuntu uses a proprietary centralized server, but we're going to move past that and not dwell on it. Then I remove Software Center update notifier because I don't like getting that update prompt. I mean, it just, it reminds me of Windows 10 and I just, no, this is Linux, man. I want to, I want to tell you when you should update Linux. I don't want Linux telling me when to update. I don't want to. I don't want a Microsoft version of Linux, which that's what that is in my opinion. But if you like that, by all means, leave it on there. You know, it's up to you. So then, also, uh, I install a lot of the GNOME or GNOME things that are actually there. Their tweak tools, system monitor, other things that were actually part of the snap packages. I disable uh, APP port, which is like their diagnostics and things of that nature. Uh, I remember I was in DistroTube's uh, Patreon chat today, and uh, I think a member of uh, um, Canonical's team was there, and obviously a pro Ubuntu person, and he said, I know exactly how many people are running Ubuntu because it reports back. Not on my Ubuntu distro, you don't. You might get my download, but as soon as I load this sucker up and de-bloat that crap, your diagnostics are coming out. You're coming, <laughs> I'm, I'm ripping it all out, man. You ain't going to know if I'm using your Ubuntu or not. So when he said, absolutely not everyone runs Ubuntu the same, and we know how many users we have, BS. We can, we can fix that. <laughs> I don't want any company knowing how many people are using a Linux distribution because I believe in privacy and security. Kind of crazy. But uh, past that, we change a couple things. Um, with Dconf Editor, I like to change how the actual file manager goes. So, uh, and then silence notifications with Ubuntu software and search. So that is my debloat. So with that, I went ahead and pulled back to the uh, Ubuntu 18 setup script. Went ahead and made some modifications here to setup.sh. You can go ahead and just wget the setup.sh right here. Just copy this whole thing and it'll run the whole thing and do every tweak here to minimize your Ubuntu install. Now, mind you, this thinks that you're doing the minimal Ubuntu install because the minimal install still installs a bunch of crap. But if you do the full Ubuntu install, I'm going to just tell you right now, you're going to have a lot more junk on top of what I'm removing here. Uh, so don't ever do the full install. Always do minimal installs with Ubuntu because it already comes with too much in my opinion. So let's take a look at our script so we can walk through what all this does. We first update our uh, package manager, which you should always do no matter what distribution you're on. That's apt update. And then we install some standard utilities, VirtualBox to do VMs and some exp extensions on that. NetTools is just nice for like doing trace route and other things. HTOP, Lame is a encoder for audio, I believe. Git to get stuff. MCs, a nice command line. File editor, Flatpak for actually installing stuff using a singular package. Uh, so instead of using snaps, I like Flatpaks. Audacity for editing audio files. OpenSSH server so we can SSH directly into our box. SSH 
FS is a file system, uh, so we can access the file system, I believe, through SSH FS. I could be wrong on that one. I mean, I'm going to have to double check. Gedit plugin text, uh, just an extension on Gedit, simple screen recorder, <laughs> Dur. and then nano for some basic edits in thermal. Uh, and then Ubuntu Restricted Extras gives you some proprietary encoders and proprietary uh, codecs. MPV is a multi-media player for this. Same with VLC. I like to have two media players because sometimes VLC, you know, gunks up on me and then I want to flip over to MPV to t look at, take a look at it. Gthumb's a great thumbnail editor. Uh, Gnome Tweaks, Gnome Tweak Tool, Q t5 style plugins which i don't think i probably actually need this one i could probably kill it spell uh, again spell i don't think i use either synaptic is the package manager so instead of using software updater i like to launch synaptic or snap it yeah synaptic synaptic i i'm brains fried whatever this one controls your package manager it's way better than using ubuntu software manager or the regular uh gnome software manager uh they're both atrocious use use synaptic like a normal user would and then we add our current user to the vbox users this allows us to launch virtual machines without having to get prompted for the root password every time we purge some junk packages like shotwell deja dupe uh g streamer uh this one and then we go ahead and remove all our snaps, install those crappy snaps that were removed as regular packages using APT and also the GNOME software plugin Flatpak, which is good. And then we also need to purge SnapD, which is coming up here. I am purging Firefox here and installing the Chromium browser instead of Firefox. But if you like Firefox, I would just take all of this and just hit delete. You don't need it. Uh, or just fork this project and create your own script, but delete this part. And then we go ahead and disable live patch. I'm not purging or removing the icons on live patch because every time you update your system, that icon will come back and it's just a never ending fight with Ubuntu. And then uh, dash to dock, click to minimize. That's just gives you this little cool effect. So you can click this, it puts it on there. I, I like to just click to minimize it. It's just a good option. So I add that in G settings. I remove some extra junk such as Ubuntu Web Launchers, Thunderbird, Rhythmbox. I don't use any of these, so I go ahead and purge those. I then install GIMP for a lot of my uh, video editing or, or image editing, I should say. And then Scribus is a nice uh, document editor for eBooks and things of that nature. And then we install games. This is the Steam dash installer is what we use. Actually, I had Steam on here, and this is wrong. Actually, it's Steam dash installer. Uh, as I think someone actually corrected me in uh, an upstream push. So with that, uh, I went ahead and merged that back into the main package here. So if you do see something in here that's wrong, by all means, submit the required changes, and I will do it. And then everyone will benefit that watches this video. That's why I love using GitHub or GitLab, whichever. And then we disable APP port. Uh, this just basically gets rid of a lot of the diagnostics that we don't like. And then we just do one final update and upgrade and then reboot your computer after all this is done. So with this, this strips down uh, your Ubuntu, gives it that nice clean look, and then you just simply reboot and you're back to the desktop. So once it's debloated, Ubuntu is not bad and this is my main pc inside i'm going to disconnect but overall um yeah yeah still don't like ubuntu but it's okay for the new user i you don't like it enough for a new user so there you have it this will get you your ubuntu working pretty good and you don't have to you know be at the hands of a lot of the bloat that comes with this operating system or this distribution i should say Overall, I really don't like Ubuntu. I think I've made that crystal clear in this video, but at the same token, I am not going to call them the devil anymore, or at least, not at least, seriously. 
I tell jokes. I, I have a really dry sense of humor and sarcasm sometimes just doesn't come across in the videos that well. So when I say it's the devil, that's me more just jokingly, you know, saying, hey, it's the Microsoft of Linux. But really, uh, I do like Ubuntu when it comes to what they do for the communi community. Uh, a lot of what they do uh, is very positive. So uh, I want to apologize for calling them the devil. If anybody took that as uh, a serious mannerism, that's just me just kind of poking fun at them in some of the instances where they've done proprietary stuff, such as the closed source centralized server in snaps, which we uninstalled snaps and those little tweaks. So don't worry about it. And then some other little projects they've had in the past and some black eyes uh, sharing data with Amazon and some other stuff. But again, that's the past. Overall, Ubuntu is good for the community, and I'll just keep an eye on them and, and keep doing it. I'll still do an Ubuntu install. It's not like I absolutely hate them. Uh, I don't want to put that out there. I just want to say, hey, it's a good joke, something I like doing, but at the same time, I hate them as far as my daily driver, and I just kind of want to lay out why and what I do to make it bearable when I do use Ubuntu. And maybe that'll help you out as well. But let me know down in the comments section. I'm always curious to hear from you guys. Uh, I've learned some of the best things out of the YouTube comments. So I always look forward to reading them, even though there's always a troll here and there. But that's just life. So with that, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.